So I wanted to talk about like kind of my thoughts on kind of creativity and expression and this power of identity, um, where you're putting your sense of who you are or think you are, um, you know, from a very early age, from, you know, earliest of your memories and beyond, you know, even into your ancestry and your, you know, your DNA, so on, you've, you have conditionings laid in upon you that some get picked up and taken, some fall by the wayside, some don't even get registered in your consciousness, but all these things, you know, we just kind of, as we go on, we're collecting them bit by bit, piece by piece, associating them with other things, kind of creating this tapestry of conditions and ideas and um, thoughts about how the world is or should be or ourselves and who we should be. But if you really kind of do some looking, you see that it's a lot of just collection of ideas, um, a lot of just uh, merely just thoughts that are kind of woven and glued together and believed in. And that's that belief and that identity. That's what lends some sort of a power to it, a creative force or power that increases the realism of those beliefs. And then it continues and perpetuates as those things, you know, keep coming up day after day to kind of reaffirm themselves in your consciousness, re reestablish themselves, keep themselves established. Um, they almost take on a, a sort of a pseudo uh, life. Um, you could call it like an entity in a way, like a thought form becomes an, an entity that has to feed of, uh, upon the food of its own existence uh, by stirring it up in your consciousness and having you believe in it um, to perpetuate its existence. Um, the thing is, if you realize this from the get-go and you look from a place that can't be seen, you know, the place from which you observe and are aware of everything that happens uh, itself cannot be seen in that way um, and doesn't require any belief to per be perpetual it doesn't require any affirming um, to exist it, it's, it is that just it is kind of quality of existence of consciousness that is mysterious to us even with all our sophisticated abstract ideas and scientific knowledge and all these things all these, all these things that um, lend credence to our worldview, um, again, falls back on conditions and ideas and things believed in. And the thing about it is, if gravity was proven to be false tomorrow, uh, all that foundation upon which all the science is built upon this reality of gravity being true would fall or have to drastically be altered or modified or changed. And so, what was it ever real, you know? So, how this relates to creativity uh, for me, well, you know, in my 20s, I kind of started to develop this chronic pain. And this chronic pain was, looking back on it now, um, very excruciating, but really the suffering came not from the pain itself, because even to this day, it's still it's still here. But it came from the identify identification with it, with you know why is this happening to me? My sense of me, it was happening to this pain was happening to it, and it wasn't going to be able to taste the the life that it thought it wanted because you know I'm bedridden, and and it, it created this thing where that fed into itself and became an identity. And my world around me kind of um, seemed to reflect that, you know, and, you know, I, I was um, the patient and I needed care and the caretakers took on, you know, I had caretakers uh, taking on that role around me, taking care of me. And, and it just created this, it created a, a, an idea that perpetuated itself. And what ended up happening is, well, something in my heart, you know, has a creative, had a creative drive to it, and it needed, it needed to be expressed, and it wasn't getting expressed, and so, because it would often come to the, the fact that, like, for example, I would sit down to play guitar or something like that, and it would hurt, and then I would just kind of give up, but 
um, as I started to learn from this, because I feel pain can really teach you a lot. It can really show you what you're not. It just, the consciousness is just kind of unfold and it comes and it has some sort of, uh, direction to it or, um, uh, per, um, perpetuity, some sort of a momentum to it. You know, everything is continually, you know, it's the big bang is still banging away essentially. Um, and it once wanted to this present me this and you know it's one of those things where oh looking back on it now i i i'm glad it happened and it's one of the, it's just one of those things you'll find that a lot of difficulty we we need difficulty we, we could we need contrast we need to see and taste you know what is bad so that we know what is good and what is wrong so that we know what is right and so you know what what it happened is i would sit down to do something that i love and it would hurt and you know thus i would suffer and you know i would feel victimized and all that kind of a thing and this continued until it hit hit a breaking point where i could no longer do this i was dying you know i had uh, a massive addiction um to a lot of prescription drugs and you know relationship was just it was uh, some kind of a monster <laughs> you know um uh, it was beautiful there was beautiful moments too but i mean just it was kind of just a, a a resonant match to what was going on inside you know a frequency match and um tumultuous you know very passionate but very tumultuous too you know it was kind of an interesting looking back it's kind of crazy how our inner worlds and our outer worlds kind of mirror each other or work in congruent with each other or there really isn't a difference it, it seems different in our mind you know that um I saw something about like how we're hallucinating our hallucinating our reality and just every day all the time and this just to, so happens to be the collective hallucination you know and this is you know our brains doing this um, are there you know it's the mind and its ideas creating these crazy senses of separation and it's just a really complex illusion I mean if you look at it on a microscopic level. It's just atoms bouncing around, bouncing into each other and interacting like that, you know. It's all the same stuff. It's all, we're all made up of the same stuff. And so, what I ended up having to do is disassociate myself from that identity of the sick person. Um, and realize that there's a place within myself, and I... I watched a lot of great spiritual teachers a lot of great I, I received a lot of great guidance from all sorts of um people dispensing this wisdom to me that you know made me really think about it and it took it took a long time for a lot of like uh caked in ideas to kind of like start to dissolve you know and i had learned like one teaching um like the power of now by Eckhart Tolle I, I i remember encountering that like three years ago and it had on a, in a subtle deep way it moved me but not it had not really taken root in my experiential existence yet or and i could not confirm it wasn't as powerful for me but you know i remember you know as i continued down this road to recovery it um it coming back around um just this last year and it was much more powerful oh yes of course you know i could confirm that from experience and things like that and that same the same teachings moved me even more further down into this uh into this place of seeing and so i ended up disassociating from that and losing identity altogether and when you know when a pain comes now it it's simply watched it's simply observed but it um it doesn't have a power over me because i don't take it for me i don't take it as myself you know and simply allowing the drive and it's a natural drive it's not forced this drive to create and be creative and do express creativity to honor like you know existence essentially is in me with no identity um to the sick person holding me back like well i'm too in too much pain you know i can't do that and i'm it frees that up for me to be able to move past things like that, move move beyond, rise above, and all that. But, um, you know, this last year, as I started to do that more and more, another identity was there that had has, has been around for a long time in me, and this, like, this sense of, like, not good enough, this sense of comparing 
comparative thinking and comparing myself to others and oh well you know seeing just you know the internet really exposed you know opened my consciousness and all of our consciousness up to like just how many creative and beautiful talented people there are out there and but you know if you look at them as people then it does create that you me thing if you look at it just as consciousness and in, in all sorts of forms it doesn't really have that same sting to it and you just realize you know life is just playing out in, in so many different ways and you know you have a natural uh gift you have a natural um expression that is uniquely you and you know it's kind of like uh, being a, a daffodil and wishing you were a dandelion. It, it doesn't work that way. You know, you're a daffodil, and, and it's beautiful. You have a beautiful expression unique to yourself. You know, I'm a sunflower, but I wish I was a compass plant. Look how tall and beautiful they are. And maybe the compass plant's like, oh, I wish I wasn't so tall. And, you know, the rich person that walks into his mansion and, oh, man, this is great. Wait, I don't feel any more fulfilled or happy. You know, it's, this, it's these projections that we're interpreting, and they're just misinterpretations. Uh, of nothing in and of themselves in the first place you know so that i started to encounter and it was kind of funny because this identity kind of came before the pain the pain was actually a result of 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 going into this creative venture this creative activity for example guitar playing and uh, with that uh that uh that uh that uh um field of of unworthiness um, that shroud or that fog cloud waft over me, wafting, you know, hovering over me as I played and, 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 and putting that energy or having that energy going into this creative, um, this creative expressive, expressive instrument, um, kind of almost, uh, created it and gave it strength and, and that would that is what actually would start to produce the pain because I noticed once I once I, and I, I dislodged from that unworthiness identity that the pain was gone too and I was suddenly just there was so much freedom on the guitar it was fun again it was simply enjoyed you know it was it was just it was natural and there was no pretension no um you know, sort of like uh, trying to do anything with it. No, like, I must be good. No, nothing like that. And it was so natural. It felt so good. And it feels so good to this day. And it, I'm a better guitar player now than I could have ever dreamed. And because I was able to learn from those, um, taking on those forms, those roles, those identities, and, and then... You know, by taking them on, I was able to look at them and contemplate them and see that they are not me and let them drop them. And in, and I'm just, I'm very grateful for that. And I encourage anybody who's struggling with that, a sense of unworthiness or struggling with pain, look at, look at and see if you can find something deeper that, that is not, that is not that pain, that is not touched by that pain, some sort a field of like awareness. See if you can you know, sit, try to meditate, try to learn to meditate, try, try to do some things that, that push you into a deeper, uh, contemplation, you know, and, and if, if, if that's not resonating with you, then, then don't worry about it, you know, I feel like it'll come, it comes naturally, I remember trying it to meditate in my 20s, and it wasn't the time, it wasn't time, but it also, and I also did like some psychedelics, it, these things, I feel like looking back now, did open the door, but the door, needed to be this eight-year journey of pain and that can be scary you know oh gosh you know uh, i want to find out the meaning of life i have to go through that well i don't know i don't know that that's the case i think a lot of it was me holding on you know for you know desperately holding and grasping to what is falling away uh for everybody uh you know our our, our bodies are going to fall away our ideas are going to fall away you know um our concepts our identity falls away fades away you know so finding what doesn't fade away and also just finding that spaciousness within you that is just there and it has no certain adherence to any kind of certain way look and see from that place live from that place and life will be in a, a beautiful abundant expression for you things will uh, spontaneously unfold you will be incongruent with consciousness, incongruent, you know, in sync with life. And you'll feel it too. If you can, if you're really sensitive, you'll feel this shift, this change. 
And the identities come, the old identities will come back for a time. That can be, you know, there's this time of like tug, tug of war kind of feelings within that, uh, you know, you'll get pulled back in. Uh, something will happen and it will, you know, you have wounds perhaps that need to heal. But again, you know, we're, we're some, you're looking from some sort of a timeless place. Uh, but we're experiencing this time, this this linear time right now, and things take time to develop. There is this we is th this this thing of life and death and growth and decay and you know these things. So as you come more into this this pureness, you know there is a time of growth. There is a, a experiencing time to develop and and move into. You know grow into this new place of being and uh, it's really beautiful and you know god bless thanks for listening